In this episode, we will be discussing Jetstream and the concepts related to it. Let's begin with a brief introduction. Jetstream is a geostrophic wind blowing horizontally through the upper layers of the troposphere, generally from west to east. Geostrophic flow is the wind that would result from an exact balance between the Coriolis force and the pressure gradient force. It flows parallel to the isomers. It develops where air masses of different temperatures meet. Usually, surface temperatures determine where the jet stream will form. Greater the difference in temperature, faster is the wind velocity inside the jet stream. Jet streams extend from 20 degree latitude to the poles in both the hemispheres. Jet stream is a circumpolar wind. Circumpolar winds are situated around or inhabiting around one of the Earth's poles. These are narrow, concentrated bands of meandering, upper tropospheric, high-velocity, geostrophic streams, bounded by low-speed winds and are a part of upper-level westerlies. Shifting towards genesis of jet streams. The genesis of jet streams is provided by three kinds of gradients. Thermal gradient between pole and the equator, pressure gradient between pole and the equator, pressure gradient between surface and subsurface air over the poles. Air, when warmed in the tropics around the equator, fuel the jet stream as it rises. Hitting the tropopause at about 58,000 feet, it is drawn toward the colder air at the north and the south poles. Tropopause is the layer of the atmosphere separating the troposphere from the stratosphere. Now, let us focus on the characteristics of jet streams. The altitude is around 20,000 to 50,000 feet. Width of this air band can be 160 to 480 km wide and 900 to 2150 meters thick. These are high velocity winds of about 400 to 500 km per hour. High velocity is due to great thermal contrast creating powerful pressure gradient force. These meandering jet streams encircle the globe, thus follow a curved path. The flow is three-dimensional and develop crest and trough. The meandering or the whirl movement of the jet stream is called Rossby wave. Rossby waves are natural phenomenon in the atmosphere and in the oceans due to the rotation of the earth. Its genesis is associated with the thermal contrast of air cells, for example, Hadley cell or the feral cell. Equatorial extension of the jet stream is more in winter because of the southern shift of the pressure belts. During winters, the thermal contrast increases and the intensity of the high pressure center at the pole increases. It intensifies the formation of jet streams, its extension as well as its velocity, shifting towards the types of jet streams. Jet streams can be divided into the following categories. Polar front jet streams, formed above the convergence zone 40 to 60 degree of surface polar, cold air mass and tropical warm air mass. These move in easterly direction but are irregular. Subtropical westerly jet streams formed above 30 to 35 degree latitude. Move in upper troposphere to the north of the subtropical surface high pressure belt. Also known as stratospheric subpolar jet streams. A subsidence motion accompanies subtropical jets and gives rise to predominantly fair weather in areas they pass over. Sometimes they drift northward and merge with the polar front jet. Tropical easterly jet streams develop in upper troposphere above surface easterly trade winds over India and Africa during the summer season due to intense heating of the Tibetan plateau and play a very important role in the Indian monsoon. Polar night jet streams develop in winter season due to steep temperature gradient in the stratosphere around the poles and local jet streams, formed locally due to local thermal and dynamic conditions and have limited local importance. Looking at the climatic significance of the jet streams. At times, jet streams bring about some moisture to the stratosphere. 
leading to the formation of noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are tenuous, cloud-like phenomena in the upper atmosphere which are made of ice crystals visible in a deep twilight. It plays a significant role in the onset and in the withdrawal of monsoon winds. Known to have brought some ozone-depleting substances to the stratosphere, which result in ozone layer depletion. It intensifies alternative cyclonic and anticyclonic conditions with the crust and trough formation in its movement. When the air mass is moving, it undergoes alternate expansion and compression, which means that it is associated with alternative high pressure and low pressure. The monsoon of South Asia is largely affected and controlled by jet streams. Shifting focus towards the role of jet streams on Indian monsoon. The burst of monsoons depends upon the upper air circulation, which is dominated by the subtropical jet streams. The southwest monsoon coming in India is related to tropical easterly streams. It blows between 8 degree and 35 degree north latitudes. The northeast monsoon or the winter monsoon is related to the subtropical westerly jet stream. It blows between 20 degree and 35 degree latitudes in both hemispheres. In winter, STJ flows along the southern slopes of the Himalaya. In summer, the subtropical jet streams shift northwards dramatically, flowing along the edge of Himalayas in the early June and in late summer along the northern edge of the Tibetan Plateau. The periodic movement of the jet stream often indicates the onset and subsequent withdrawal of the monsoon. Northward movement of the subtropical jet is the first indication of the onset of the monsoon over India. Towards the end, let's focus on some prelims-based practice questions.